Whoop whoop everybody. This is the 1943 silver nickel, war nickel. It's the second year of the 35% silver of World War II until 1942 to 1945. It's one of those three years I got to I got 1944 and 1943 now. Now I just missing 1945, which is it which isn't much of a biggie. But it's a P wartime niggle, 35% silver. I believe the mintage of these are 271 million. I mean I believe you can find a pretty uh quite a quite bit more in circulation. And for this year, Kurt Wood Smith was born. Uh, Joe Pesky was born. Uh, this is the year G George Washington Carver died. And Jim Morrison's death of this year what was happening in. Let's see. Okay, in August 23rd, 1942, German troops began pursuing into the city. The remainder of the German en enemies surrendered in, on February 2nd, 1943, bringing an end to the Battle of Stalin. Ninth Allied victory marked importance turning point of the war shifting to the favor of the Allies. Okay, in January 31st, 1943, over 90 thousand German troopers of Starling Guard surrendered to the Soviets and its significant turning point to the war against Ger Germany. Okay, one more. For the photo spread of the states on the 22nd of August 1943 showing fa fa famine Conditions of Colunt began famine. 1943 was the major famine of the Belang province, British India, during World War II. Okay. If you find one of these struck on a copper planchet, I believe, uh, there's one online for ten thousand dollars, which is pretty outrageous, but it's struck on a copper planchet. So I believe for the area of that, the era of a copper planchet for for this coin, it's gonna be up in the big money thousands, probably, if that's what's really worth. But it's not worth it to me for these usually go around two point two dollars and the highest sold at auction for sixty five dollars for nineteen forty three like i said for thirty five percent silver eighty eighty two cents silver milk value and the total is a hundred and four billion one hundred and sixty produce as all i don't know about those special mint sets and here's today's scripture, Psalms 22, a plea for God's presence. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Just like Naba. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest now, not in the night the reasons, and thou I am, thou am not silent. <clears throat> Proverbs 22 But thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praise of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. But I am a warm, and no man reproach of man. And despite it of the people, all they had see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord, and that 
that he would deliver him, let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he, but thou art he that took me out of the womb, thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. I was cast upon thee from the womb, thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have come past me, strong bullets of Bashan have beasted me round. <clears throat> they gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of bowels. Okay. My strength is dried up like a pot shed and my tongue clivereth to my jaws and thou hast brought me unto the dust of death for dogs have compassed me that the assembly of the wicked have included me they pierce my hands and my feet I may tell all my I may tell all my bones they took and share upon me they pair they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength has thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of unicorns. So the Palmers use imaginary for animals to represent enemies all are repeated with exception of the wild unicorn still bulls. Their horns are gored. Okay. Okay, the connection between one's enemies and a wild animal, especially a lion, is found in other psalms. The womb expresses humiliation, an idea that is further developed with the scorn enemy shaking the head as a physical gesture often associated with sneering and mocking. The disgrace was discreet contrast, the fact that Jehovah kept Israel from disgrace, the thought that Jehovah would not rescue one of his own was a common assumption by Israel enemies. And that's all the scripture of Psalms 21. I hope you enjoyed my little talk. And this is Lakeview John out.